Hi guys, this is Vip Mitra's Warhammer Tactics series and today I want to discuss playing with the Black Templars. Whether you are a novice or you have played for a while with the Black Templars, I'm sure you will find a lot of useful things in this video, so without further ado, let's start. I strongly believe that in order to succeed with an army, you have to know thoroughly what it is and isn't good at. Otherwise, you will be pushing your forces into the places and situations that they aren't prepared for and aren't meant to be in. So what are the strong sides of the Black Templars? Of course, they are Space Marines. Not a bad start, actually. They have access to all the models, all the secondaries, all the stratagems, relics, and etc. All the models, that means except the librarians and the upgrade of the campaign champion to the chapter champion because they have their own special model, the Emperor's Champion. The second best thing that happened to them after being made Space Marines is the 5-up in one uh, that is available to them army-wide and the baby transhuman that protects them from being wounded on twos in shooting and in melee. If you don't know the rules of the Black Templars, this is what you get for the vow that's called Uphold the Honor of the Emperor. There are three other vows, but honestly, I won't even be talking about them in this video, because you will never use them. There are no games, and I mean no games, where you would substitute the 5-up in one and Baby Transhuman for anything else that they provide. And the great thing about this invulnerable safe, unlike the uh, psychic fortress, uh, psychic power that allows you to have 5 up and 1 on anything else that you, is within 6 inches, or relics like the Dominus Aegis from the Death Watch, is that it is applied to your entire army with no auras, no characters, no relics required. So you can send out your the storm speeder for example or anything else and it will still have that five up in one even though there are no models from your army around it next is their chapter tactic you can re-roll advances and charges and get a five up shrug against mortal wounds it's it's a nice one i can't say that it's one of the best it certainly isn't there are some uh chapter tactics that are much more powerful but th this one is good when you know that you have the five up in one and the baby transhuman in your back pocket it's actually just like the Dark Angels. Their chapter tactic isn't that great. It's uh, much weaker than some of the chapters, but their army-wide special rule is uh, very powerful. It's much more powerful than their chapter tactic, actually. I'm talking about the Invan for the Ravenwing and the uh, Permanent Transhuman for the Deathwing. What I like about rerolling charges and advances is that it saves you command points and makes your life easier. You, It's like having three or four command points more in each of your games and you are not limited to one reroll per phase. So if you have a couple of important charges coming up, you don't need to be thinking hard about what, what do you need to reroll first and what charge do you need to sacrifice and not reroll in order to have that reroll for your actual most important charge of the phase. I also really like the Immortal Wound part of the chapter tactic. It's very important for your expansive three wound models like Blade Guard, the Terminators, or your Centurions, especially when you play against armies like Thousand Suns with a huge Mortal Wound output. And there will certainly be some times when your Dreadnought explodes, for example, and there is a character on two wounds nearby, and you will have a chance to save that character instead of this character being automatically killed, or killed on a roll of three plus in this case. The Black Templars are all against Psychics, so they don't have any Psychers themselves, and they also have some great abilities against Psychers, as I've already stated, the Mortal Wound ignoring part of their chapter tactic. Also, they have a stratagem to uh, ignore any Psychic power, or deny any Psychic power on a 4+, plus from any of their units within 24 inches. And of course you can take the Port the Witch secondary, which is going to net you anywhere from 8 to 15 points in each of the games where there are a lot of psychics on the board, like Grey Knights or Thousand Suns. Or if you were playing against Bellacore and Chaos Demons, Greater Demons, this would also be a great choice. The Black Templars have a great collection of named characters which have been upgraded in the last edition of this codex. They are all primaries now and they look stunning. The models are wonderful and the rules are wonderful as well. But we'll talk about that in a later section. They have access to their own list of litanies, litanies of the devout. Those are some great uh, buffs and we will talk about them in later sections. 
Another thing I really like about this Black Templar supplement is the ability to buff single models like sergeants in your squads to a ridiculous level. We'll talk about that in the synergy section in a bit more detail. But as a general rule, in any case where you can protect a very important, very powerful unit or model inside your army so that it cannot be targeted directly, it's usually very powerful. And of course, like with the other Space Marine supplements, a great selection of unique stratagems and relics that are perfectly suited for the Blake style of the Black Templars. Now let's talk about the weaknesses. First of all, as the Black Templars don't have any psychers themselves, they can deal with the enemy psychers in some ways, but it's actually limited to one deny stratagem, I've already talked about it uh, earlier, and the deny from Grimaldus, if you have him in your army, and the warlord trait that allows you to deny an extra psychic power with plus one to deny, uh, the one that actually Grimaldus himself has. But that's it, so maximum of three denies not that much, especially if you are playing against a very psychic heavy army. Talking about their chapter tactic again, they aren't blood angels, so they don't get plus one to wound on the charge or when they get charged, and they don't get plus one to advance and charge either, so charging from deep strike will be as hard as always, especially if you don't have the canticle of hate in your army, which is something that I highly recommend to have. And they don't have any innate buffs to their melee output as well. So they're basically like the standard Space Marine. Only when you incorporate the litanies of the Devout, you can start to get something that resembles a more close combat oriented chapter. And they aren't as mobile as the White Scars as well, so you can't charge after advancing or falling back, there are no stratagems like that in this book, and you don't get plus one damage in the Assault Doctrine, so your Chain Swords and Lightning Claws won't be uh, as uber killy as they are with the White Scars. Most of the buffs in the Black Templar supplement are centered around the Chaplain's Litanies, and in order to have both Litanies of Battle for your plus 2 to charges from the Canticle of Hate and your plus 1 to Wound and Melee from the Exhortation of Rage, and the Litanies of the Devout, you need to have two Chaplains in your army. And this in turn creates a problem that you won't be able to fit into one detachment your lieutenant, your captain and two chaplains, because most of the detachments only have two or three HQ slots. And with most of the recent Space Marine supplements, there are no extra ways to generate command points, apart from the Master of the Codex Warlord trait from the main Space Marine book, and I've already talked about this trait in detail in my video that's titled five things to avoid in codex space marines so i guess you can uh, see what i think about this warlord trait the unique secondaries of the black templars are mostly mediocre and we'll look into that in detail in the separate section of this video so are the world traits. Unfortunately, this army, which is, I think, the best place to have all those glorious world traits that allow your characters to become murder machines, uh, and all of those traits are missing here in this book. The best thing that you can find is probably something like plus one attack and always fight first, which is not a bad world trait, but it's worse than the, uh, for example, Imperium Sword from the main Space Marine Codex and you would expect to have more of those powerful melee buffing Warlord traits in the Black Templar supplement, but unfortunately it's not the case. Now that we've learned about the weak sides and the strong sides of the Black Templars, let's talk about the army composition. What do I think a typical Black Templar's competitive army should look like? First of all, as we already discussed, the whole army has a 5 plus invulnerable save and it cannot be wounded on twos. Therefore, I recommend to have more vehicles in your army, especially Dreadnoughts, as they are one of the best Space Marine units out there already, and with a 5 up, they become much more resilient. If you like the new Space Marine tanks, like the Gladiators, especially considering that they have decreased in price recently in the last chapter approved uh, points review, 
I actually think that it's worth trying to use this tank, especially with toughness 8, 5 up and 1, and the ability to pop smoke for minus 1 to hit, it probably won't be an easy target for your opponent to shoot off the table, even with no minus 1 damage like the dreadnoughts have. Next up are my favorite assault intercessors, one of the best troops uh, that the Codex Space Marine has to offer. They are very efficient, they cost less than the intercessors, they still have some decent, decent shooting if you are in range uh, with their heavy bolt pistols. And uh, they have chain swords, so they have AP1 on their attacks, they have 4 attacks each on the charge or if they get charged. So yeah, they are not a bad troop choice at all, especially now with the 5 up and 1 and baby transhuman in their pocket. Next I recommend to have a single big squad that's very tough and that will attract most of the shooting of your opponent and most of the attention as well. You need to distract your opponent from targeting your Redemptors because with all those D3 plus 3 damage weapons that are in the game right now with the Dark Lances from the Drukari, the Adeptus Mechanicus planes with their last cannons, the Entropic Cannon on the Plague Burst Scroller and so on and so forth, they uh, those weapons when they get through the 5 up and 1 they actually start to whittle down your dreadnoughts which is not something that we want. We want to have a big and scary unit that advances towards the enemy and attracts all of that heavy shooting towards them. Of course it will be killing some of those Terminators or Blade Guard, but it's much less efficient than when those cannons start to hit your dreadnoughts. And as I've learned in multiple games playing the Dreadnought Moving Castle, is that if your Dreadnoughts are still alive in, on turn 3 or turn 4 of the game, you have probably won this game. And later in this video we will discuss exactly how we should approach making that unkillable Terminator blob. Now regarding the fast parts of your army, you need to have the board presence and you need to have something that can reach out and touch uh, units that your opponent doesn't want you to reach. Something that's standing on a fire objective in the other corner of the map and you should have something that will be able to get there eventually on turn 2 or turn 3. But pick the fights for those Vanguard vets wisely because they are pretty easy to be killed if they charge the wrong thing. Now regarding the chaplains, as I already said, you should have two chaplains in your army. One of them should be a master of sanctity with all of your litanies of the devout and the other a support one with litanies of battle. You can use the bombastic delivery strategy for two command points to guarantee Kantico of Hate on your most important turn where you need those charges to go ahead and you will also, as per the strategy, have a chance to successfully recite the Exhortation of Rage litany as well. I must point out, however, that the second chaplain with the litanies of battle is not a must-have. It's just something that I would recommend uh, to have in your army if your army composition allows it. As for the detachments, the go-to detachment for any Space Marine army I think is a battalion, of course. It has three HQ slots, which is something that we really need with the Black Templars. Six elites, which will be all used up uh, when you finish your list. I will have an example of a list at the end of this video. And the only thing that I don't like about the battalion is that you have to pay the 300 points for, for the troop stacks, as it's called. Another option that you can go for is the Vanguard Detachment. I actually like it more than the battalion. And the only bad things about it is that you need to pay the 3 command points for the detachment and you lose the third HQ slot that the battalion has. Now onto the secondaries, as I've promised earlier. This first secondary that we're gonna look at is from the Battlefield Supremacy category and it's called Allow Not the Worship of Unclean Idols. It's like the shock tactics from the main Codex Space Marines, but worse, because in here you get 4 victory points at the end of the battle round, instead of 3 with the shock tactics. But you not only need to control the objective that your opponent controlled at the start of the battle round, but you also need to have a Black Templar's chaplain unit from your army within range of that objective. These are two very difficult conditions to achieve, I think, and 
probably you are far better off trying to take stranglehold or uh, engage in all fronts. Next is the bathe your blade in the blood of your foe secondary from the purge the enemy category and it's basically your typical uh, challenge type secondary. You choose a character in your army and your opponent chooses a character in their army and if you manage to kill that character at all throughout the game you get 5 victory points, if you manage to kill that character in melee it's 10 victory points and if you kill that character in melee with the character that you've chosen from your army you get 15. It's not a bad secondary, it's just it's not very reliable especially if your opponent knows, knows how to counteract it. The best case is uh, to take the secondary would be if your opponent doesn't have a lot of characters and the characters that the opponent has are those that cannot sit in the opposite corner of the battlefield whole game without it being actually detrimental to your opponent's plans. Like say if you're playing against an army of chaos demons and they're just a bunch of greater demons on the board and of course your opponent won't be hiding a whole greater demon behind obscuring terrain throughout the game because it's a waste of points so in this case yeah this secondary may be a good pick however please remember that there is assassination in the same category and in most cases it will probably be more beneficial to select it instead of this secondary because this secondary gives your opponent a chance to manipulate your actions in the game, which is always a bad thing. And of course, if you're playing against an army with a lot of vehicles, especially vehicles with 11 or more wounds, I would most likely recommend to take Bring It Down instead of this mission. And lastly is the secondary from the No Mercy No Respite category, Carry Out Your Vows. It has two components, the progressive one and the end game one. You can get up to 12 points for the progressive component and maximum of 3 points for the end game one. And the progressive component is a very hard condition to achieve. Again, you need to kill more of your opponent's units uh, throughout the battle round in melee then your opponent managed to kill in their whole turn and the battle round itself uh, in melee, in shooting, in psychic phase and etc. So it's like a harder version of grind them down. And I think that grind them down is actually better than the secondary because it's very hard to achieve especially in the first two turns when the, your army is advancing on the enemy and is not close enough for all those charges to go ahead. I don't think it's worth it. Especially when we have secondaries like Oath of Moment from the main Space Marine Codex, uh, which are more likely to score you points and are way more predictable. So yeah, I recommend from the Battle of the Supremacy category, I recommend to take Engage or Stringle Hold depending on the mission. From the Purge the Enemy category, Assassination, Bring It Down, and maybe, maybe in some very special cases, uh, the uh, Bathe Your Blade in the Blood of Your Foe secondary. From No Mercy, No Respite, I think it's uh, either the Oath of Moments or Grind Them Down depending on the mission and what enemy you are playing against. And of course, Abhor the Witch if you're playing against Psychic Heavy Armies. Now my favorite section, the synergies. First of all, I want to discuss our big blob of Terminators that we've touched upon in the army composition section. So we have a 10-man Terminator squad with shields and hammers. So I recommend to upgrade the sergeant with the Champion of the Feast stratagem for one command point, which will make him a 4-wound Terminator with 2-up weapon skill and plus one attack. In case of a Blade Guard Veteran Sergeant, I also recommend to use the Revered Repository Strategy for one command point to give him the Sword of Judgment for that sweet sweet damage 3 power weapon. And using the Relic Bearers page in your Codex Supplement, I want you to give that Sergeant the Crux Obsidian or the Icon of Hymen. The Crux Obsidian is basically minus one damage from all attacks, like a Dreadnought, and the Icon of Hymen is ignoring AP1 and AP2. I've thought long and hard about which is the better buff for Terminators and Bladeguard and I've decided that actually in most cases you are better off ignoring AP1 and AP2 and not subtracting one from the damage characteristic, especially if you have, and you will have in most cases, a Filmopane. 
Next, I recommend to have Grimaldus in your army because he's an uber chaplain and he gives Dreadnoughts 6 up shrug, which makes them even more unkillable. And your Grimaldus is not only going to babysit your Dreadnoughts, he's also going to be buffing and sending out your melee units with D3 plus 3 rerollable advances, the litany of the divine protection for the 5 up shrug, and uh, one of the two main litanies, main offensive litanies, the Psalm of Remorseless Persecution for the Mortal Wounds and Sixes to Wound, or the Fires of Devotion for the simple plus one attack on the charge. Usually, you are better off trying to increase the amount of attacks with the Fires of Devotion if your main assault unit has a very powerful stat line in and of itself, so like Thunder Hammers, for example. If you want a more universal buff, the Psalm of Remorseless Persecution is a better choice because you can apply it to any unit, like a five-man uh, Vanguard Veteran squad with Lightning Claws, and in most cases, on average, this squad will do five mortal wounds on the target that they're gonna charge, which is they're really not bad. But if you have a 10-man blob of Terminators, of course, having 10 more Thunder Hammer attacks is better than even those five or six mortal wounds that you're gonna deal in melee in addition to all the other damage. Crusader's Helm is an awesome relic from the Black Templar supplement. It increases all of your aura abilities by three inches and also gives you an ability to pick a unit within nine of this character and move it up to the Assault Doctrine. And talking about this relic, one of the greatest characters to have this relic on is an Apothecary, because you'll be increasing his aura of 6 up shrug to 6 inches instead of 3, and also you really need the Apothecary for your Black Templars list to revive the Relic Bearer slash Champion of the Feast guy uh, every turn when he eventually gets killed. The greatest thing about that is that you will be reviving a 4 wound Terminator with 5-up or 6-up shrug on him, a 4-up and 1, 1-up save, and each turn it will be harder and harder for your opponent to master the forces to kill uh, this lone model in the squad, let alone the uh, all other models in the same squad. I really like the Devout Push Stratagem that the supplement has. It was changed, it used to be much more powerful and you had the ability to uh, basically insert yourself into the engagement range of the units with the stratagem. Now it's gone now, it only gives you an ability to uh, pile in 3 inches more in your fight phase or if you are not within engagement range you can move an additional 3 inches. But there is a very clever way to use the stratagem, which I really like, is for example on a unit like Eradicators, when they stand in front of an objective, firing at the enemies, and then you use the Devout Push and move them closer to the closest objective, which is something that the stratagem allows, and you hide them behind the obscuring terrain this way. It's like jump should jump uh, from the Elder Codex or the Drukari Codex, but it's uh, better because it's on the Eradicators. Also, I really like the Strength of Conviction uh, strategy for one command point that you can use to give OPSEC to your unit in your command phase until the start of your next command phase, so the whole battle round. It's a perfect way to steal objectives from your opponent. And the Tenacious Assault Stratagem that prevents your opponent from falling back from your unit on a 4-up is another great way to protect your units from shooting in your enemy's turn and give you another chance to strike at them again in their turn. Now the special characters. First of all, Halbrecht. He is a beast in combat now. 7 attacks on 2 plus at strength 8, AP 3 and damage 3, or 14 attacks at strength 6, AP 3 and damage 1. It's impossible possibly great for an infantry character of his size and for the price of 160 points it's a bargain. Of course he's a chapter master so he can give full rerolls to hit to one unit, he also gives a reroll to hit uh, aura of a captain and plus one strength aura for core units within six, so he's a buff machine as well. What I also like is that he has 8 wounds and he's primary now, so he, you can use transhuman on him, even though he obviously will also benefit from the baby transhuman that you get from Uphold the Honor of the Emperor Oath. 
Of course, Grimaldus, we already talked about how great he is. He gives an aura of 6 subtract to all the core units at Dreadnoughts as well. D3 plus 3 advances, uh, aura of leadership 9, and he's a master of sanctity. So yeah, for 140 points, he's a steal. Now the Emperor's Champion. He is a mirror of Grimaldus. Uh, he doesn't give any buffs. He's just there to kill the enemy's characters. And he does that pretty well with 6 attacks on 3s at strength 8, AP 4 and damage 3. Or 6 attacks on 2s at strength 7, AP 3 and damage 2. He also rerolls all wounds and hints against characters and fights first against characters. He has a 4 up and 1, 2 up save, 5 wounds and minus 1 to hit in melee. He costs 100 points and the only thing that I don't like about him is that he's an HQ. So if you have two chaplains and, uh, for example, Halbert or Captain in your army, there is simply no way for you to take the Emperor's Champion, which is stupid. Unless you take two patrols, which is not probably something that you would want to do with Black Templars, because you will be paying two command points for the second patrol, and you will still be paying the 200 points of the troop stacks uh, for the two patrols. Now the relics. I really like the Tenhauser's Bones relic that allows you to change all the damage incoming on your character to 1, no matter what the damage is, even though it's like Paragon Gauntlet from the Imperial Knights with damage 8, uh, you will still only suffer 1 wound from that, especially with the Iron Resolve Warlord trait from the main Space Marine Codex that gives you an extra wound and a 6 up shrug, your chaplain would be a very survivable character. I like the Aquila Immortality relic it gives you plus one attack and plus one toughness and not a great thing to add to your lieutenant for example your uh, captain if you don't want to take those typical uh, buffing relics like the uh, crusader's helm for example uh, the aquila immortalis is a great choice if you decided not to have Grimaldus in your army, I recommend to have a Master of Sanctity and you should give him the Ancient Breviary for you to be able to roll two dice for all of his litanies. This will allow you to do those litanies practically all the time, only in one thirty-six of a chance you will fail. Of course, the Crusader's Helm, we've already talked about why it's good. Having AP4 or AP3 on your weapons, AP4 on the swords, AP3 on Lightning Claws and Thunder Hammers is, is very important, and having extra flexibility with your auras is nice as well. The Ruin Shroud is a great relic if you're running a bunch of uh, troops on the ground with known vulnerable safe, like, say, the Crusader squads, uh, the new Primaris Crusader squads, 20 men, uh, and this will really protect them but in other cases if you are running blade guard vanguard vets and terminators you won't need this one and of course the sword of judgment we've already talked about it strength 7 ap3 and damage 3 a great and simple relic all the swords that have uh, damage 3 are our best friends <laughs> And as for the roster example, here is something that I've concocted uh, through all my sleepless nights thinking about the Black Templars. Uh, it's a vanguard detachment. I have Grimaldus here, Halbrecht, as my main characters. In the elite slot I have an apothecary with the chief apothecary upgrade and the selfless healer warlord trait. And the Crusader's Helm, of course. The Redemptor Dreadnoughts, three of them, with the Onslaught Gatling Cannons and the Microplasma Incinerators. A full 10-man squad of Terminators, nine of them having Thunder Hammers and Storm Shields, and one of them having the Lightning Claws. And the Champion of the Feast upgrade on the Sergeant with the Icon of Heinemann on him. Uh, and the 10-man unit of Vanguard Vets that I would combat squad at the start of each of the games to have more flexibility on the board with the Jump Packs, uh, Lightning Claws and Storm Shields and the Power Feast, uh, Feast of Balthus on the Sergeant. A squad of Eliminators, uh, just one to hold a home objective and a five-man squad of Eradicators to deal with all the anti-tank stuff that the Redemptors uh, didn't manage to kill outright. As you can see, there is no second chaplain because I decided that I'd rather have more Terminators and more Eradicators than pay the troop stacks. I think that this 
army, especially Terminators, especially if I advance them D3 plus 3 for the first and maybe second turns, they will reach what they need to charge eventually anyways. So without the plus 2 to charge, especially if I use the devout push stratagem correctly. So that's why I don't have the second chaplain in this list. So that's it guys, tell me what you think about my list in the comments below, I hope this video was useful for you, if you have any questions please let me know and I'll see you next time.